Elon is an interesting case. So you are a proponent, you celebrate Elon, but he's also somebody who has for a long time warned about uh, the dangers, the potential dangers, existential risks of artificial intelligence. How do you square the two? Is that a contradiction to you? It is somewhat because he's very much against regulation in many aspects, but uh, for AI, he's, he's definitely, um, you know, a proponent of, of regulations. I think, I think overall, you know, he, he saw the dangers of say, open AI, you know, cornering the market and then getting to have the monopoly over uh, the cultural priors that you can embed in these LLMs that then, you know, as, as LLMs now become the source of truth for people, then you can shape the culture of the people. And so you can control people by controlling LLMs. And he saw that just like it was the case for social media, uh, if you shape the function of information propagation, you can shape people's opinions. Mm -hmm. he, he, he sought to make a competitor. So at least, like, I think we're very aligned there that, you know, they're, the way to a good future is to maintain sort of adversarial equilibria mm -hmm. between the various AI players. Um, I'd love to talk to him to understand sort of his thinking about uh, how to make, you know, how to advance AI going forwards. I mean, he's also hedging his bets, I would say, you know, with Neuralink, right? Mm -hmm. I think if he can't stop the progress of AI, you know, he's building the technology to merge. So, you know, uh, look at the actions, uh, not just the words, but. Well, I mean, there's some degree where being concerned, maybe using human psychology, being concerned about threats all around us is a motivator. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's an encouraging thing. I operate much better when there's a deadline, the mm -hmm. fear of the deadline. Like, and I, for myself, create artificial things. Like I, I wanna create in myself this kind of anxiety as if something really horrible will happen if I miss the deadline. I think there's some degree of, of that here because creating AI that's aligned with humans has a lot of potential benefits. And so a, a different way to reframe that is, if you don't, you're all, we're all gonna die. It just seems to be a very powerful psychological f formulation of the goal of creating human-aligned AI. I think that anxiety is good. I think, like I said, I want the the free market to to create aligned AIs um, that are reliable. Uh, and I think that's what he's trying to do with uh, XAI. Um, so I'm all for it. What, what I am against is sort of um, stopping, let's say the open source ecosystem from tri thriving, right? By let's say in the executive order, claiming that open source LMs are dual use technologies and should be government controlled, then everybody needs to register their GPU and their big matrices with the government. And I think that extra uh, friction will dissuade a lot of hackers from contributing hackers that could later become the, the researchers that uh, make key discoveries that uh, push us forward, right? Uh, including discoveries for AI safety. And so, I think I, I just want to maintain the ubiquity of opportunity to contribute to AI and, and to own a piece of the future, right? It can't just be legislated, uh, you know, behind some wall where only a few players get to play the game. I mean, uh, so the EAC movement is often sort of caricatured to mean sort of uh, progress and innovation at all, at all costs. Doesn't matter how unsafe it is, doesn't matter if it causes a lot of damage. You just build, build cool shit as fast as possible. Stay up all night with a Diet Coke, uh, whatever it takes. I, I think, I guess, I don't know if there's a question in there, but how important to you and what you've seen the different formulations of EAC is safety, is AI safety? I think, again, I think like if there was no one working on it, I think I would be a proponent sure. of it. I think, again, our goal is to sort of bring balance and obviously a, a sense of urgency is a useful tool, right? To make uh, progress, it hacks our dopaminergic systems and gives us energy to, to work late into the night. I think also having a higher purpose you're contributing to, right? At the end of the day, it's like, what am I contributing to? I'm contributing to the growth of this beautiful machine so that we can seek to the stars, that's really inspiring. That's also a sort of uh, neuro uh, hack.
So you're saying AI safety is important to you, but right now the landscape of ideas you see is AI safety as a topic is used more often to gain centralized control. So in that sense, you're resisting it as a proxy for centralized, gaining centralized control. Yeah, I, I, I just think we, we have to be careful because, um, you know, safety is just the perfect cover for sort of centralization of power and covering up uh, eventually corruption. I don't, I'm not saying it's corrupted now, but it could be uh, down the line. And really, if you, if you let the argument run, like there's no amount of sort of centralization of control that will be enough to ensure your safety. There's always more nine, nine, nines of P safety that you can gain, you know, 99.99999% safe. Maybe you want another nine. Oh, please give us full access to everything you do, full surveillance. And, and, and frankly, those that are proponents of AI safety have proposed like having a global panopticon, mm -hmm. right? Where you have centralized perception of everything going on. And to me, that just opens up the door wide open for a sort of big brother 1984 like scenario. And that's not a future I wanna live in. Because we know we have some examples throughout history when that did not lead to a good outcome. 